you would please, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Second Corinthians chapter number 4. The Bible says in verse number 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who uh, commanded... The light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus. Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. Can I get a witness? But though our outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, I thank you so much for all that you do for us. Lord, I thank you for this passage of Scripture. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the wonderful salvation that we have received in Christ Jesus. Thank you so much for saving our wretched souls. Thank you for giving us that wonderful gift of eternal life that cannot be lost. And Father, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for the ministry which you've called us to. Lord, I thank you for the Solid Rock Baptist Church. I thank you for each and every one of the ministries that we have here, Lord. And I pray, dear God, that you'd help each one of us to do our part. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. This is my church. That's right. This is my church. Amen. And that's the title of the message, if you haven't figured that out yet. And so this is my church. And listen to me. This ought to be, if you're a member here, say amen. amen. This ought to be your amen. church. Amen. And listen, uh, uh, when we stop and we think about this, there are, there are so many times people contemplate leaving and moving and going on and getting out of church and all of those kind of things. But the truth of the matter is, is we're not in this for us. That's right. We're in this for Jesus. Right. 
He's our Savior. He's our God. He's our King. And He has ordained the local New Testament church. Can I get a witness? Ephesians chapter number 5, where the Bible says in verse number 25 that he gave himself for the church, amen? And so, uh, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and did what? Gave himself for it, amen? And so the church is so vitally important. And you ought to get in an early part in your life, very quick, very soon, get in your mindset, this is my church. This is my church. I love my church. I love the people in my church. I love everything about Solid Rock Baptist Church. Even the things I don't like about it, I still love it. Amen and hallelujah. And so as we look at this, we see this. I want you to jump into this with me. Uh, listen, how we, rece- how we choose to, I guess, in a sense, uh, what I'm looking to say is, is how we choose to con- consider Solid Rock Baptist Church will depend on how much effort we make, how much love for we have, are you with me, and how much we'll invest ourselves in this place. Would you agree with me that church is commanded? It's not optional. This is a very important thing that we do here. Turn over to Psalm chapter number 84 before we get into this. Verse number one says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we what? Faint not. Amen. Now go over to Psalm 84. Don't lose your place in in 2 Corinthians. We're going to go there and uh, we're going to dig a little bit. I'm going to meddle today. And I like... Really, honestly, I just really enjoy meddling. And uh, it's one of my favorite things to do in life is to meddle a little bit. And uh, it's just one of the fun things of my life. I like to, I like to, I like to meddle, amen. I do. I like to meddle. I like to mess with you a little bit. And uh, I really, especially teenagers. I mean, teenagers, meddling with teenagers is so much fun. And so, hallelujah. And so when we look at this, we see this. Listen. How you feel and how you view Solid Rock Baptist Church, how you consider it to be. Listen, what what would happen here that would cause you to leave? What could happen here that would cause you? I want you to ask yourself these questions. Because listen, if the devil can figure out what needs to happen here to get you to walk out the door, mark it down. He will do whatever he can to make it happen here so that you'll leave. Can I get a witness? So that maybe, maybe not leave, but maybe just kind of back off a little bit and not put your 100% in. Are you with me? Yep. Listen, if, if Jesus has given us the gift of eternal life, now, now follow my thinking, would you not consider it to be the most important thing in life worth living for? Yeah. Is your eternal life? Is this matter of eternity? Is this matter of what we're investing in heaven? Listen, this world is not my what? Home. I'm just a passing through, amen. And listen, I don't know about you, but there's nothing, there's nothing else that I'd rather be doing than what I'm doing right now. Amen? Is being in church, preaching the word of God, and listen, being a part of ministry, working with people, loving people, serving the Lord. Can I get a witness? This is what we're here for. Psalm chapter number 84. Look at verse number 10 with me. Verse number 10. I love this. For a day in thy courts is better than a what? Thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I would rather stand over by that door over there and open the door for people and invite them in and smile and say, welcome to Solid Rock Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here today. Come in and get preached to. Amen. And so listen, I'm telling you, there's nothing greater in all the world than serving God in the local New Testament church for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And I know I've drilled this and spent time on, on hammering this, but listen, what's your claim to solid rock Baptist church? 
Are you with me? Can I ask you, listen, what is it that is going to keep you in place? What is it that is going to keep you serving the Lord and growing and developing and pushing forward for the cause of Jesus Christ? Other than the fact of a local New Testament church. Listen, there are too many people in our society today that are running around like uh, uh, Christian evangelists that hop from one place to another and they don't put their roots down anywhere. And listen, that is not God's will for a person's life. Listen, you know what an evangelist is? He is a God-called man that goes into ministry who has a home church and is sent out of that church. And a person in our community doesn't get to jump from, well, I'm going to go to Solid Rock today, and then next week I'm going to go down over to Grace Baptist, and then I'm going to jump over to the Catholic Church over here, and I'm going to go do this over here because I'm kind of ministering to all these different people in our community. That is ungodly, that is wicked, and that is not God's will for any child of God. Can I get a witness? Listen, that's exactly right. Amen. Let's all get together, hold hands, and sing kumbaya, sing kumbaya puke. Anyways, and so hallelujah, as we look at this, we see this, this matter of church. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. David had a longing to be in the house of God. Go over to Psalm chapter number 42 with me. Psalm chapter number 42. I want you to see this too. This is good. Psalm chapter number 42. David's running. He's in the wilderness. And he is unable to go to the house of God. Look at what it says in verse number 1. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my what? Soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the what? house of God. He's reminiscing. He's remembering days of old with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar, deep calleth under deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone what? Over me. Now, I don't know about you, but I am so looking forward to the next time that I'm in church and the Holy Spirit sweeps through. And those, listen, and those, what does he say here? Those waves and those billows are gone over me. He relates it to like a wave just sweeping over the top of him, like a billow just hitting him broadside, like a strong wind that blows. And man, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to the next hour. And I don't want to, listen, I don't want to miss that service. I don't want to not be here when God does that work. I want to be in God's house when God sweeps through Solid Rock Baptist Church again. Listen, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God. And man, I'm just here to tell you there are times in ministry that it's just like, where is the Lord? And when things are dry and when things seem a little bit, what's going on? Just don't change. Just don't move. Listen, there are seasons in ministry and sometimes the seasons come through and it feels like it's deader than 2 o'clock in the morning. 
I can just tell you this. Your pastor is still praying, Amen. still preparing, yep. still trying to do everything he's supposed to do. And so listen, don't get the idea. Listen to me now that, listen, it's going to be dry around here for a while. We better go find us another place. I don't think so, amen. Listen, God is not done with Saul Little Rock Baptist Church. You can mark it down. Listen to me. I will say unto God my rock. Let's verse, uh, verse number 11. Why, hast thou, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalm 43 follows up Psalm 42 in a very good and powerful way. And so listen, church... Man, I'm telling you something right now. Church is just absolutely amazing. And you don't want to miss out on the move of God when he decides to move the next time in Solid Rock Baptist Church. And listen, he may speak to your heart on a continual basis through the preaching of the word of God. Yes, I understand that. But listen to me. There are times when God sweeps into a service and man, it just gets real. It gets real. It gets alive. And man, I'm excited about it. I'm really looking forward to Brother Ray's coming again because normally one of the services throughout that week, man, the wind blows. Amen. Go to John chapter number three. I want you to see that. Look at this. This is good. John chapter number three. John chapter number three. This is good stuff right here. It's good to be saved. Let's pick it up in verse number 7 of John chapter number 3. When you're there, say amen. <clears throat> verse number 7, the Bible says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be what? Born again. Born again. Look at verse number 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, do you get that? Listen, when God decides to blow through and move in a service, that is his business. Amen. That is his business and his prerogative to when he wants to move in a church service. But we, the people of God, we need to be busy about this matter of seeking God's face and seeking revival in our own personal lives. And not only that, but a, a, a normal daily prayer all to be, God, we need revival. God, we need you to sweep through our church once again. Hey, listen, <clears throat> Let's claim our church as ours. Amen? The first thing I want you to notice over in 1 John, listen, the wind blows where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but you can't tell whether it comes or whether it goes. Can I get a witness? And so when God decides to move and sweep through a service, Listen, so many times people want to attach it to a certain preacher and a certain message that they preach. But the truth of the matter is God chooses to move when God chooses to move. Amen. And you know what happens is, is when God blows, all of a sudden the preacher that happens to be preaching, all of a sudden is preaching a powerful servant. Amen. And it's not necessarily anything to do with him at all other than the fact that he is just yielding himself Amen. to the work of the Lord. Amen. And so when we look at this and we see this, so many times in history, we want to point to a, a Jonathan Edwards or, or a, a George Whitfield or, or a Jack Hiles or, or some other big name preacher. But the truth of the matter is, it's the Holy Spirit choosing to move when the Holy Spirit chooses to move. Are you with me? And so now look at this. So many times, everybody, everybody seems to need to have a hero. Everybody seems to need to have some kind of a preacher that is just, wow, he's our, man, I'm telling you, this guy's just, man, I'm telling you, God's all over this guy. But the truth of the matter is, is listen, God uses sinful men. Go to 1 Corinthians. Oh, we got, God. yeah, I was there this morning and, 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 and I want you to see this. Listen. You think about the Apostle Paul and how God used him. And while we've been in the book of Acts, how many times did he blow it? How many times did he, he mess up and do these things? 
Listen, if you're looking for some kind of a perfect preacher, there is no such thing. He was here 2,000 years ago. He preached with power. He died on an old rugged cross and was buried and rose again. And listen to me. He is coming again. And I'm excited about that. Amen. And that very Jesus, praise God, he lives inside of me. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, look at it with me. Let's pick it up in verse number 26. Me and the men, we looked at this this morning in Sunday school. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are what? Called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the what? Wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are what? Mighty and base things of the world and the things which are what despised hath God chosen yea the things which are not to bring to naught things which are what are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Listen, if I just happen to get up here and I happen to be swinging my Louisville slugger, amen, and that fastball comes down across the plate, it's dead center. I like it a little low because I like to scoop it a little bit and get it up in the air a little, amen, and that's the way I like it, and I like it when I swing the bat, amen, it's been a while. Pray for me, baby. I don't want to pull my back. And so in leaning back like this, and I just pull back and swack and I'm hoping to drive that baby out. And now if I happen to catch the ball just right with the end of that bat, you know where that ball's going? It is going over the fence, amen? And I'm telling you something right now. It just happened to be the right swing with the right pitch, and it just connected. And you want to know why? Not because, hey, listen, when I played Little League, I was the best player on my team. But our team was the worst team in the league. And so that wasn't saying much, amen. And listen to me. I'm telling you right now, if I happen to get up here and the Holy Spirit steps in and sweeps into the service and begins to work and move in a special way in hearts and lives, listen, it's not because Jim Frost is just, I'm walking in the glory, amen. No, it's because God chose to work. It's because God chose to breathe. It's because God chose to do something. And listen, it is his prerogative when he decides to do something. And yes, we should walk with God and we should be clean and we should be holy and we should be godly. And listen, I'm here to tell you, there are services that I know for a fact where a preacher preached and God swept through that place. And I know for the fact that the preacher was living in wickedness and sin. Explain that. Explain it. I'm talking, I'm talking a preacher that I know that preached the message and God swept through that place in a conference and the man was in an adulterous affair at the time. Explain that. <gasps> what? Yeah. Despised, weak, Use those things because God chose to do a work amongst his people. And the guy in the pulpit happened to be a guy living in sin. Come on. Are you with me? And so this whole idea of big name preachers, it is not of God. Are you with me? Listen. Now, I want to be the best that I can be for the cause of Jesus Christ. But the truth of the matter is, is God moves when God chooses to move. This is my church. Whether God never blows through again, that's his choice. Are you with me? If God chooses to just Listen, if all we do is just hang on until the rapture, that's what God chooses to do. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And listen, if that's the case, then listen, if it's God's will, then who am I to argue? Are you with me? And so when we look at ministry and we look at it, listen, the bottom line is, is when we look at Solid Rock Baptist Church, yes, it is the Lord's church. 
but we got to lay ownership to it. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now listen, what is the church to Christ? It's two things. It's his body and it's his bride. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now listen, <clears throat> would, you, would I be wrong in saying that uh, I'm the head of Jim Frost? This is my head, by the way, if you didn't know. And so, and listen, this is my suit, amen? Mrs. Frost will test, this is my suit. Can I get a witness? Okay. Now, would you not agree that my body, this is my body suit as well? Would you not agree with that? Absolutely. Now, this is my suit, but if I were to die, whose suit is it? It's hers. You want to know why? Because she's my bride. This suit belongs to her. Amen? And whatever she chooses, if I were to croak right now and drop dead, bang my head on this hard floor. And listen, this suit would then become hers to do whatever she wanted with it. Amen? It's hers. Are you with me? Now, who's the body of Christ? Go ahead, raise your, raise your right hand. Ra raise your right Come on, raise it up. Amen. Participate. Amen. It won't hurt that bad. Listen, now, Marie Roush, listen, if you're part of the body of Christ, raise your right hand. Now, if you're a part of the bride of Christ, if you're the bride of Christ, raise your left hand. Can I get a witness? Amen. And so this is our ministry. This is our church. Listen, it's our ministry. Look at what it says in verse number one of 2 Corinthians chapter number four. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Therefore, seeing we, the church, have this ministry. This is our ministry. And this ministry will be everything that we make it to be. Can I get a witness? It's going to be everything. Listen, church is going to be fun for those who want church to be fun. Amen? Church is going to be an exciting place and a place that you love to come as long as that's what you want it to be. When you come through the doors, like, man, I don't know what preacher's going to hit me with today. Oh, boy. Well, you can expect to get hit with something today. Amen? Listen, but if you come through the door, man, come on, preacher, get out that Louisville slugger. Hit a homer, preacher. Can I get a witness? I want to catch the fly ball. Amen? Hey, there's nothing great. There's something. I, I used to play outfield, and there was just nothing greater than seeing that ball come sailing in and land in that pocket and make that play. Oh, man, it was a blessing. And then you breathe and say, whew, thank God I caught that ball. <laughs> Are you with me? And listen, I'm telling you something right now. I, what am I saying? I want to receive from the Lord what he has for me. I am looking for God to Mark chapter number 10 with me. Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10 in your Bibles. Mark chapter number 10 in your Bibles. I want you to see this. Mark chapter number 10 in your Bibles. We're going to pick it up in verse number 45. Verse number 45. <clears throat> Mark chapter number 10. Did I just lose something? Is this on right now? Yeah, I want the battery. charge them for about a week or so. Oh, good. Thank you, Brother Dave. Am I back on? Am I live? Am I there? All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Got to love sound systems. Listen, Mark chapter number 10, look at verse number 45 with me. For even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for what? 
many. Listen, the truth of the matter is Jesus came to minister, not to be ministered unto. Just as we are here to minister, ministry starts at salvation. As soon as we're saved, we're to begin ministry in the local New Testament church. 1 Peter chapter number 4. Go there with me. 1 Peter chapter number 4. I want you to see this. 1 Peter chapter number 4. As soon as a person saved, as soon as a person gets in, ministry starts then. First Peter chapter number four, look at verse number 10 with me. Verse number 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same, what? One to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Ministry, amen. We are to minister the very gift that God has given us. We're to minister salvation to others. And listen, ministering salvation just doesn't mean winning lost people. It is also ministering salvation to one another, sharing the gospel with one another. Listen, it is important that we major on the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we major on his death, his burial, and his resurrection. A common conversation that ought to be in your life every day, all day, throughout your entire life ought to be his death, his burial, and his resurrection. It is the ministry of salvation. It's the ministry, and it starts at salvation for every individual. Listen, I don't know how a person, listen, I have been in this <clears throat> we, I've been pastoring for over 12 years now. I have been in ministry for many, many years. Uh, we, we started out in, in, while I was in the military, amen. I started going to church with her. Her mother made me go to church, and it was the best making that ever happened to me, amen. And listen, and started going to church with her. We started getting in church and started attending church when we were young in the military, and thank God we did. And you know what? I just got addicted to it. I just got into church, and all of a sudden, little by little, it became not just a Sunday morning, not just a Sunday night, just a, all of a sudden, it started happening more and more and more, and I wanted to do more, and I wanted to be involved more, and I wanted to teach the Bible, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, God is calling me to preach, and so as we look at this and we see this, ministry starts at salvation. Listen to this. D.L. Moody made this statement, a good many are kept out of the service of Christ, deprived of the luxury of working for God because they are trying to do some great thing. Let us be willing to do little things and let us remember that nothing is too small in which God is the source. Nothing is too small in which God is the source. The most what you would consider opening that door for people, that is huge in the work of God. Cleaning the bathrooms is huge for the work of God. Listen, handing out and making sure everybody's got a bulletin is huge for the work of God. Listen, every little part of the ministry is important in the work of God. Somebody who comes around here and straightens the chairs and makes sure the offering plates, offering envelopes are in place, making sure the songbooks and the, and the Bibles are, are straightened out and all of that kind of stuff. And, and the chairs are lint rolled and the floors are swept and mobbed and, and the building looks presentable. All, all of it matters. Every part of it is important. Listen, ministry starts at salvation. And ministry is maintained. Look at verse number one of our text once again. <clears throat> Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have what? Received mercy, we do what? Faint not. Amen. Ministry is maintained by not fainting in the way. Are you with me? Go over to Galatians with me. Galatians chapter number 6. <clears throat> Galatians chapter number 6. <clears throat> Charles Spurgeon said, If we give God service, it must be because He gives us grace. We work for Him because He works in us. Amen? amen? amen. If you're saved in here, say amen. Amen. My Bible says the Holy Spirit of God works in us. Galatians chapter number 6, 1st, 2 Corinthians, Galatians. Galatians chapter number 6. Look at verse number 9. And let us not be what? Weary and well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we what? Faint not. Listen, don't give up because you're tired. 
It is one thing to be tired in the work. It is a totally different thing to be tired of the work. Are you with me? We ought never get tired of the work because it's the very work whereby we were saved. Are you with me? Because somebody labored in my life the gospel of Jesus Christ because somebody kept on witnessing and somebody kept on ministering and somebody kept on praying and somebody kept on preaching and somebody kept on inviting and somebody kept on working on this old boy. I got born again. Can I get a witness? Because somebody didn't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And thank God they didn't. And man, I stop and I think about all the different people that have gotten saved since I've gotten saved as a result of me. Man, the person who, is, who has any part of my salvation has rewards and treasure in heaven. Man, what a tremendous blessing. I'm glad that I didn't turn out to be a dud, amen? I'm glad that, that there's fruit that abounds. And so as we look at this and we see this, ministry is maintained because we don't give up. We don't faint in the way. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Turn back there with me. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. <clears throat> if we give God service, it must be because he gives us grace. We work for him because he works in us. Thank God God is working in me. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Look at verse number 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number one. Look at verse number three and four. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all what? Thank God for the comfort he gives. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of what? God, listen, just stay after it and let God comfort you. And as he comforts you, you're going to be able to comfort others. Amen? And so don't grow weary in well-doing, because if you faint not, you shall reap. Can I get a witness? Amen. Listen to this. This is good. Taylor Hudson Taylor said this, I used to ask God to help me. Then I asked if I might help him. I ended up by asking him to do his work through me. Can I get a witness? God is awesome, and he wants to do his work through you. Listen, ministry is maintained by not quitting. Ministry is, it starts at salvation. Yes. And so we see it's our ministry, but not only is it our ministry, it's our responsibility. Go back over to uh, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians. It's our responsibility. Look at verse number 2 with me. It is our responsibility. It's our ministry, but it is our responsibility. Listen, you'll hear people say everything rises and falls on leadership. Well, everybody in church is supposed to be a leader. Can I get a witness? Listen, if you're saved in here, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You know what? Uh, uh, there's times that, that this pinky finger is the leader in my hand. You ask Mrs. Frost when I'm getting water out of the back of the car. Every finger's got a jug. And the one that's having the hardest time is this little guy right here, amen. And I've got all these jugs of water, and I'm carrying them into the house, and this little guy is screaming. And so guess who's in charge? The little guy is in charge, amen. And so listen to me. I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> whether it's the pinky or the thumb, whether you're the thumbnail or the hair on the head, amen. Listen, every part has leadership. Amen. Every part leads some way, somehow. And each and every one of us are leaders. You want to know why? Because each and every one of us have people that are looking to us. Every one of us do. Listen to me, it's the truth. It's just like Tiff in her testimony this morning about, about the scripture reading. Listen, what would happen if you quit? Oh, it would, you think it would? Oh, it'd have an effect. Oh, yeah. it, it'd have a negative effect. Listen to me, I'm telling you something right now. What would take place in, in your family if you quit Saul Rock Baptist Church and just, I'm done? What, what would, exactly, what would happen? 
What would happen if Jim Frost quit? <laughs> are, you, are you with me? The impact, and every one of us can say the same exact thing. Amen. I mean, how? listen, every one of us, oh, I wonder how long this will last for him. That should never be the statement. It should be, you know what? This is going to be until the day I die. I am not quitting. I am not giving up. I am not stopping. Hey, listen, it's our responsibility. Acts chapter number 12. Look at verse number 2 of our text. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God, what? But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to what? Every man's conscience in the what? Sight of God. We are commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Listen, if there is one person that knows that you attend Solid Rock Baptist Church, you have an accountability to walk honestly and not handle the Word of God deceitfully. Are you with me? Listen, you've got to handle the Word of God honestly. You've got to handle it the right way. And this isn't just talking to preachers. He's talking to an entire church here. We have got to handle this the right way because those watching us, listen, they're watching us, wondering what we're going to do with what we believe. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm here to tell you something right now. This matter, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. It's our responsibility. Acts chapter number 20, verse number 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The Apostle Paul speaking here, he said, none of these things move me. All of the persecution, all of the problems, all of the battles, I am going to, listen, I am going to finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I am going to follow this thing out to its end. I am not going to quit. Go to 2 Timothy with me. 2 Timothy in your Bibles. 2 Timothy in your Bibles. Listen, this is so vitally important. This is so important. We, listen, God, God is going to hold us accountable. God is going to hold us accountable. We are going to stand at the bema seat of Jesus Christ. We are going to give an account of how we handle this book. And it's by this book that we will be judged. Are you with me? It's by the word of God that we're going to be judged. And how we handled it and how we lived it. Look at what it says. Verse number 6 of chapter number 4 of 2 Timothy. For I am now ready to be offered... And the time of my departure is at hand. The Apostle Paul speaking. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, and so we see in this passage, the Apostle Paul said, I have finished my course. Listen, my desire for you as your pastor, my desire for you, the people of Solid Rock Baptist Church, is for you one day to be able to say, I finished my course. Amen. I've done what God wants me to do. I've completed the task at hand, and I am ready to be offered. Just as the Apostle Paul said, it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility you know what? How Solid Rock Baptist Church looks to people is my responsibility. Yes. How Solid Rock Baptist Church looks to people is your responsibility. Yes. Hey, listen, how every, every aspect of it, what people think about Jesus Christ is my responsibility. Are you with me? What people think about Jesus is 
my responsibility. And so we see it's our responsibility and it's a personal purity, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Listen, it is personal purity. Our doctrine has to be pure. Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and in of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God. How we handle it is so vitally important. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, that we handle the word of God and that we don't do it deceitfully. Can I get a witness? That what we say we believe, we practice as well. And so we see it's our responsibility to, ter- to personal purity, but also for people's perception. We see in this passage, but <clears throat> by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Listen, people's perception, these living souls that are around us, how they perceive things. We, we are doing it to their conscience. Acts chapter number 24, verse number 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Can I get a witness? It's for the perception of people. We have got to be careful. Listen, mom and dad, it is so important how you handle yourself in the home. It is so important how that you manage your Christianity in front of your family. It is so vitally important that, listen, a person who will cast doubt on a doctrine of the Word of God that their church teaches and preaches to their children is a fool. Is a fool. Listen, I'm here to tell you something right now. This book from beginning to end is so vitally important and the way we perceive it. I'm telling you something right now. If, 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 if this can't be trusted, are you with me? Then nothing can. There is nothing else out there to be trusted. If this book isn't it, then listen, I'm telling you something right now. There's nothing else out there to be trusted. And if you can't trust it, quit now. Because you are messing up your family. And it would be better for them to think that you're not a believer. And then hopefully they'll get it in their own. Are you with me? Listen. This book is true. It is right. You can count on it. You can mark it down. You can can completely build your life on this book. And you'll be the better for it. And you'll be thankful you did. And I'm telling you something right now. People's perception. I am pleading with you as your pastor. Don't be a fool. Live this book honestly. It's our ministry, it's our responsibility, and it is our liability. Look at verse number three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not what? ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus sake listen the liability is great far too great to ignore far too great to avoid far too great to be apathetic or lethargic towards it the the, the liability is huge and the liability is the fact that the people around us if we do not give a clear presentation of our faith, then we could be the very one condemning them to hell. The liability is great. And it's a liability to the lost. Go to Romans chapter number 1 with me. 
Romans chapter number one. Romans chapter number one. <clears throat> Romans chapter number one. Verses 14, 15, and 16. The apostle Paul says in verse number 14. He makes it very clear. Verse number 14, when you get there, say amen. amen. I am what? Debtor. Debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the what? Unwise. Unwise. I'm a debtor to them. Yep. I'm a debtor to them. We are debtors to the lost. We are debtors to the lost around us. Listen, we, didn't deserve, can I get, we don't deserve salvation. That's right. That's right. And nobody in this room deserved to go to heaven. By God's grace, His mercy, He saved us. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit of God. Thank God. And we're a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, what, the gospel? For therein, look at verse number 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. From faith to faith. Amen? From faith to faith. To faith, to faith, it is passed on. And listen, if we don't win our own family, if our own kids aren't going to get saved, how in the world are we going to reach anybody else? Are you with me? The liability to the lost. Go to Ezekiel chapter number 33 with me. Ezekiel chapter number 33. We ought to have such a change of, of life, and we ought to have such a change in our disposition, our mannerisms, and our lifestyle that, listen, our family cannot refute the fact that we are born-again believers in Jesus Christ. And there is something real about what we believe. Amen. There's something real about this salvation. Hey, listen, there's something real about what we have. <coughs> Verse, chapter number 33, look at verse number 6 with me. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his what? But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Because the watchman that was standing on the wall, didn't warn of the imminent danger, didn't warn of what was to come. And if we're not warning people that hell is real and that Jesus can save them from that awful place, then their blood will be on our hands. Their blood will be required at our hands. The liability to the lost and the liability to the Lord. Back at our text... And it says in verse number five, for we preach not what? Ourselves, but Christ Jesus the who? Lord. And ourselves, your servants, for whose sake? Jesus' sake. It's a liability to the Lord. We have a liability to the Lord Jesus Christ. He has saved us. We are debtors to the Lord. Are you with me? And we are to be warning the lost. This is the job he's given us to do. Go to chapter number 5. Look at chapter number 5. We're going to hit this once again. Look at verse number uh, 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the what? Ministry of reconciliation. Paul includes the entire church of Corinth along with himself. That means every Christian has the ministry of reconciliation. 
to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. It is our job now to reconcile lost sinners to a loving Savior. Can I get a witness? We are the ones that are to bring them together. We're to take the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ and put it right in the face of those lost, hell-bound sinners. That is our job. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Be reconciled and be a reconciler for the cause of Jesus Christ. We have a liability to the Lord. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 3, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Are you with me? Go there. Let's look at it. I want you to see it. Some of y'all give me a blank look. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 12. <clears throat> Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, verse number one, let us lay aside every what? And the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and what? Finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of what? Against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. What is he saying? He's saying that, listen, remember how Jesus suffered at the hands of sinful men and what he went through, and he did it so that you could be saved. Amen. He did it so you'd have eternity in heaven that the Holy Spirit of God would live inside of you. Are you with me? And so as we look at this and we see in this passage, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. If he endured such contradictions, why should not we? And I'm here to tell you, the enduring that we put up with today is nothing compared to what he had to deal with. Listen, and even if it was, it would still be worth it all. Amen. So we see the liability to the laws, the liability to the Lord, and then I want you to notice the liability to the laborers. The liability to the laborers. Back in our text, <clears throat> look at verse number 5 of chapter number 4 of 2 Corinthians. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Amen. A liability to the laborers, your servants for Jesus' sake. Galatians 5, 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Amen? The liability to the laborers. Hebrews 10, 24, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Everyone's standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. Amen. This is my church. Amen. This is my church. And you know what? Somebody saying something unkind to me is not going to take my church from me. Somebody not living the way a Christian ought to live is not going to take my church away from me. Are you with me? Somebody who talks bad about my church is not going to take my church away from me. Can I get a witness? Listen, I don't care what politician writes into law, what law. They're not taking my church from me. Amen? I don't care what it is. This is my church. Is it yours? Is it yours? Is this your church? Do you feel the burden and responsibility and the liability. Is this your ministry? 
is, do you feel the responsibility and the liability that we have to the Lord and His work? Listen, Solid Rock Baptist Church is your church. If you're a member here, this is your church. Amen. Don't neglect your responsibility. Don't ignore the liability. Oh, it's a heavy thing. It's a heavy thing. And I am pleading with you today, please take responsibility for your church. Take responsibility for the Solid Rock Baptist Church. This ministry, listen, a church was never meant to be placed on the shoulders of one individual. Not we the people. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. This ministry is a responsibility to the Lord, of course, but it's our church, and we have a responsibility to this marriage. We have a responsibility to this body. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If God spoke to your heart this evening, would you slip your hand up as a testimony to heaven? God sees those hands. You could put them down. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. Help us. Help us to accept the call. Help us to accept the ministry. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. Help us to walk honestly. Help us to present ourselves as we ought. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. If God spoke to your heart and you need to come, you come on talk to the Lord. Amen. The front row is wide open. Come talk to the Lord.